service information, GFI hardware, and a lot more. 247 East Gaines here in Lawrenceburg. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Ralph Benson Memorial Gym, our national anthem performed by the Lawrence County High School Court. by the Lawrence County High School Chorus. And boy, what a great job. Some of those students are in your classes, huh? Yeah, I didn't know they could sing that well. That was, that was an excellent job. Man. They, they, they're surprising some of them. A lot of talent here. Here come the uh, Lady Raiders being introduced. As uh, Rachel... a fine job for the Lady Raiders out of Spring Hill. The Lawrence County High Lady Cats. Here's Kayla Goodwin. Goodwin is 5'5 and a senior. Melody Saxon, 5'8 senior for the Lady Cats. Katie Smith, 5'9 junior. Wendy Hartsfield is a 5'8 junior. And senior as we get ready to go head coach Willie Joyner assisted by Stacy Childress coach Willie Joyner has won 74 coach Joyner is starting his fifth year at Lawrence County High School 74 42 Nene Caldwell will jump for Spring Hill. Katie Smith will stand in and jump for the Lady Cats. Telahoma's in here Friday night, but right now it's the Lady Raiders out of Spring Hill, Tennessee. Nene Caldwell, a good jumper, a six-footer. The tip goes to Mel Saxon. Lawrence County's got it. In the band, Randy Bean, a pass. Tip touched last by Spring Hill. Oh, good hustle right off there. Thought we had an easy, easy basket coming off. Maybe. Mary got the nice bounce. Nice play, though. Now Saxon gets it in to Goodwin. A three up. No good. Bouncing. No good. Parham got the rebound for Spring Hill. Here come the Lady Raiders. Spring Hill working. Pass goes to Rachel Gillum, 5'8", senior. Gillum looks for Parham. Back to Nene Caldwell. Sometimes Caldwell posts up. Here's Gillum underneath to Caldwell. Nene, her shot no good. Rebound, Goodwin. Kayla Goodwin's going to rush it out for the Lady Cats. No score. This game just underway. Lawrence County and Spring Hill. A three by Saxon. No good. Shot it over the uh, rim. Spring Hill takes the rebound. 
Pass goes down court to Caldwell. Looking for Parham. Parham back to Gillum. Gillum will shoot the three occasionally. Gillum giving to Randy Ann Hall. Her shot no good. Rebound, Katie Smith. Katie rushes across the timeline. Katie's got about an eight-footer. Short, no good. Katie got the rebound to Kayla Goodwin for three. No good. Put back up. No good. Rebound out of there to Rachel Gillum, 5'8", senior. Gillum for Spring Hill. Gillum to Amanda Parham. Parham, a 5'5", senior. A whistle under the basket. A whistle and a foul. Looks like there was just a crowd there, and she got her feet tied up and fell. There wasn't really much contact, but there were several girls around her, but I got the foul call anyway. I'm sure Coach Joyner would like us next time down to just settle down, take a, get an easy shot inside, get the, get the scoreboard lit up, for, you know, get the game started. Wendy Hartsfield picks up the foul. Here goes Caldwell driving. Her shot blocked by Brandy Bean, but Spring Hill keeps the basketball. Amanda Parham with it. Parham back to Caldwell. Caldwell... In three-point range, gives back to Amanda Parham. Parham underneath to Caldwell. Caldwell can't hold the pass, and it's going out of bounds. Lawrence County will have it. Yeah, both teams play a man-to-man, and, and Spring Hill's moving a lot better than they did up at their place. They're running their offense through pretty good. Spring Hill is coached by Kim Hayes in her first year. Rusty Brewer is her assistant. Katie Smith got to the free throw line. A jumper, good. That's what you want. Penetration just inside the foul line. Pull up, hit the shot. That's a high percentage shot for Katie. Spring Hill rushing down, trailing by two. Both teams had several shots. Neither team could score. Here's a pass under there to Caldwell, bouncing around. And it's going to bounce off of a lady cat. Uh, went off Brandy's back. She was fronting the girl and didn't have any backside help, so she was lucky just to just get a hand on it and knock it out of bounds. Long pass coming in bounds and a violation over and back, wasn't it? I believe that or she stepped on the sidelines. I couldn't really tell. It was on the far side, but any, it's our ball at half court, up two to nothing. Lawrence County with the lead, 5.30 left in the first quarter. Katie Smith gives to Goodwin. Kayla wants to go inside, tries to feed Brandy Bean, ricocheted, intercepted by Spring Hill. Amanda Parham at the top of the circle. A pass intended inside to Hall, intercepted by Bean, and Spring Hill takes it right back. But Katie Smith's got the steal again, and Katie's got a layup. Good! Heads up play by Katie. She they fell asleep a little bit and lobbed the pass. And you don't lob them around Katie, she'll take them and go the other way. It's 4-0, Lawrence County with a lead over Spring Hill. Spring Hill's got to take time as they can't get the ball in bounds. We'll be back at the gym. It's 4-0, Lawrence County leading. Now they'll, they won't take the timeout. Lawrence County will have the basketball under the goal, and Mel Saxon will put the ball in play. Looking for Brandy Bean, found Katie Smith. Katie into Brandy, back to... Saxon over to Goodwin. Goodwin shot no good. Knocked out of bounds by the Lady Cats. I believe what happened under the basket, the girl tried to call timeout because she couldn't get it in bounds, and she was past the three-second count. You can't call timeout once you get to the four-second count from the official, so he wouldn't give it to them. But we, we end up turning it over anyway. Okay, an interception by Wendy Hartsfield giving to Katie Smith. Katie goes to Kayla Goodwin. Goodwin to Brandy Bean. She's hit from behind and a foul on Randy Ann Hall. But Kayla's missed a couple of shots, but she needs to keep shooting. They're going to sag off her and make her shoot. And she can shoot the basketball. She's a, she's a good shooter. She just needs to knock one down, make her come out and play her. Lawrence County gives to Brandy Bean. Pass inside. Touched by Spring Hill going out of bounds. Kayla Goodwin will put the ball in play. Smart play by Brandy then pulling her hand back after the deflection, not, not trying to get a piece of it going out of bounds. Hartsfield gunning a three. That is good. Nice setup, nice move from the left from the right-hand corner. She took plenty of time, an easy shot for her. Puts us up 7-0. Lawrence County with the lead. Spring Hill goes to work. And Wendy Hartsfield had the steal, but she was standing out on the baseline. So with the basketball will be Spring Hill. They'll put it in under their goal. Rachel Gillum will trigger the ball in Browns. Gillum puts it in right here to the reserve. Faith Severson. Severson into the ball game. She plays point guard. 
pretty often Caldwell pulls out to the top of the circle. Here's a long shot by Spring Hill, no good. Gillum got the rebound, put it up, no good. Mel Saxon will take the rebound now and give to Katie Smith. The Lady Cats lead by seven. Katie forced a pass into Brandy Bean. Spring Hill's got it. Who is that player, Jim? Number 15 for Spring Hill. As the Lady Raiders rush down, Severson with a basketball at the top of the circle. Severson goes in the corner to Parham. Spring Hill yet to get on the board. Lawrence County led Spring Hill up there 25 to 6 after the first quarter. Katie Smith almost had the steal. They throw it in to Nene Caldwell. She's going to drive the baseline and kick it out to Gillum. Gillum's shot bouncing around. No good. Lawrence County will have it as it hit the top of the backboard. 20 seconds. Timeout. A 20 second time. We will be back in 30 seconds. Tennessee Valley Carpet Outlet is the most complete floor covering outlet in this area. We're in Lawrenceburg. Back at the gym where the Lawrence County High Lady Cats lead 7-0. As I told you, they led 25-6 after the first quarter up there at Spring Hill. Lawrence County's won six and lost none. Lawrence County's first game was Giles County. The Lady Cats will have the basketball in backcourt with 3.31 left. 3.31 to go in the first quarter. Katie Smith, bothered by LaToya Miller. Pass intercepted by Nene Caldwell. Caldwell got it out to Severson. Severson crosses the timeline, bothered by Katie Smith. Gives to LaToya Miller, the sophomore. Here's a foul on Smith. Katie picks up the foul. It'll be her first and the second team foul on Lawrence County. Yeah, Katie called Severson looking the other way and thought she could sneak in. She saw her out of the corner right just in time to turn and get a little contact, so Katie picked up the foul. Gillum puts the ball in play. Gillum puts it in play to Severson. Miranda Wallace comes into the game. Kayla Goodwin will get a breather. Here's a LaToya Miller underneath. LaToya shot. It's up and it's good. Nice basket. She was the most impressive player up at Spring Hill coming off the bench that time starting tonight. So, she's, you know, she's, not, like I said, transferred from Columbia Central. She's a good player. Katie Smith's going to drive down the middle, give off to Saxon. Saxon's three. Good. Beautiful shot from the right corner. Nice, nice arch on it. You'd like them to, to go slow here. They're playing good post defense inside. We've got to hit a few shots like that and be patient, get the ball inside, too. It's 10 to 2, Lawrence County leading. Miranda Wallace almost had the steal from LaToya Miller, but Spring Hill kept it. Now Mel Saxon gets the steal. Mel's looking for some help. She's going to take it in. Layup. Good. <laughs> nice little left-handed reverse layup going across the lane. Nice. I didn't know Mel had that shot. I don't think she did either. <laughs> it's 12 to 2. Lady Cats leading. Here's a steal by Miranda Wallace. Miranda drives. She missed her layup. Saxon put it back. No good. Tipped by Katie Smith. No good. Miranda Wallace got it. It's good. Now that's justice there. She made the steal, went down and missed the layup. Ended up getting the ball back and getting the two points. She earned that two points. 14 to 2. All of a sudden, the Lady Cats jump way out as Nene Caldwell takes a pass across midcourt. Nene really in trouble by uh, Brandy Bean and going to have to take a timeout. No, five, five second count on her in the corner. She couldn't get rid of the ball, couldn't find anything to do with it. Brandy's playing so tough on her and they got the five second count. You don't see that often down the baseline. Usually that happens out front. Okay, Lawrence County to go to work and Mel Saxon will get a breather right here. Mel's had a, a very productive first five minutes of this game. Here's a pass into Brandy Bean, a turnaround jumper, a little short, no good. Rebound out of there to Randy Ann Hall. Boy, she can jump. Yes, she, she can. Six feet tall. Severson to bring it down. 14 to 2 is the score. Saxon, rather Hartsfield had the steal for a minute. Now Hartsfield's going to take it down, stop, jump, banked it. Good. Nice shot. Got the steal, took it down, had to pull up, take about a five, six foot jump shot, banked it in. That's nice, you know, nice smooth shot. Finish up, finish up the breaks. What you like to do? 16 to 2 and Spring Hill travels as the Lady Cats use their full court press. 
Well, Spring Hill's efforts, the effort's not bad. I mean, they, they play hard. They, they don't seem to have anybody to go to on the offensive end. I don't know if that's because Lockridge is still out and they, they depend on her that much or, or what, but they, they just don't have a lot of offensive weapons, doesn't look like. Okay, here's Katie Smith going to start in and be fouled by Miller. That'll be the first foul on Miller and the second team foul on Spring Hill. And it was a shooting foul. I thought he blew the whistle really, really a second or so before the before she went up for the shot. But then she was hit again on the shot. So either way, it works for us. Katie's free throw is no good. Katie will have another shot. Katie Smith. Stephanie Johnson, 5'8", sophomore, number 22 for our coach Kim Hayes in Spring Hill. Katie's second free throw, no good. Rebound, Randy Bean had it. Now Spring Hill takes it away. Here comes Randy Ann Hall with a basketball, giving to Severson. Severson back to Sykes. Long shot, up good. It's a three-pointer, wasn't it? Yeah, banked that one in from, from almost the top of the key. I don't know if she, she intended that, but it's three points either way. 16 to five. Lawrence County with the lead. Katie Smith gives to Kayla Goodwin. Goodwin to Wallace with eight seconds to go in the first quarter. Hartsfield with four seconds. Back to Brandy, a jumper from the free throw line. No good, Wallace got it. The first quarter ends, Lawrence County leading 16 to five over Spring Hill, back in one minute. Tallahoma game coming up, a district game Thursday night right here at Ralph Benson Memorial. She had to stay <laughs> on it. Mel's back in the game. Spring Hill trying to get the ball in play. Now they try to feed it in there to Hall, and Lawrence County steps in quickly to tie her up. The possession arrow favors Lawrence County. Like I said, Spring Hill's a scrappy bunch, but they really don't have a whole lot to go to on offense, doesn't seem like. Uh, but they're not looking for anybody. They, they haven't been able to get very many good shots. Kayla Goodwin gives to Brandy Bean. Brandy back to Hartsfield. Hartsfield's going to drive down the middle. She got about an eight-foot jump and put it up. Somebody's hanging on her arm. The shot is no good. I believe that was on Sykes. I'm not sure. That was a shooting foul, wasn't it? Right, right. There's a lot, lot of crowd in there. Wendy, Wendy can make that shot and almost made it with the foul, but she, now she's got two. First free throw good by Hartsfield. She's got a half a dozen points. Of course, a good thing about a game like this, it gives a player like Miranda Wallace a lot of extra playing time. She's a good player and gets a lot of time anyway, but this gives her a chance to stay on the floor a lot. Okay, Spring Hill trying to work through the full court press. Randy Ann Hall is going to travel. Turnover. Boy, this team really misses their senior Cammy Lockridge, they have a lot of trouble getting the ball down the floor. 18 to five, Orange County will play. Kayla Goodwin, the senior for the Lady Cats, gives to Hartsfield. Wallace is open for a three that rims in and out, no good. A lot of players that can hit the three-point shot. Here's a pass underneath the basket to Hall. It's going to be knocked out of bounds by Hartsfield. Every time they seem to have somebody open, we've been able to just get that extra step and get a hand in and knock it away. So we, have, we haven't given them e any easy baskets at all. Katie Smith, Katie's going to take it down, put it up. Six 
Franklin's here Christmas time. Boy, the Wildcats coming off of that big win at Franklin County, and it was a big one, wasn't it? Jim oh, yeah, yeah, it was a big game. Tied 50 50 late and, and went in by seven, and your senior, senior stepped up and, and hit the uh, end. Uh, Brian Mitchell, and, and you know, that. Severson's going to bring it across up to it. That's stolen by Melody Saxon. She'll stop, jump, good. Saxon's got 10 points. Lawrence County's had a lot of steals tonight. As Here's another steal by Miranda Wallace. She'll put it up, good. Wallace. Miranda Wallace. And good thing about this, gives us a chance to work on the press, because I'm sure uh, Tullahoma uh, Thursday night, we'll, we'll want to press them quite a bit. Just gives us a chance to see where, we're, where our mistakes are. Okay, Spring Hill loses it again. Miranda Wallace got it, gives to Kayla Goodwin. Goodwin's layup is good, and she's fouled. Oh, beautiful, beautiful layup by Kayla. Uh, Left-handed layup. That, that's a good thing about these girls. They all can shoot both sides of the basket. They ball can go out in the floor and shoot. They can go inside and shoot, you know, and, and, and play defense. I mean, we're talking five points for Spring Hill with less than six minutes to go in the second quarter. So, you know, those are things you got to have to be a championship basketball team. At the free throw line, Kayla Goodwin. Her free throw good. Somebody stepped across the line, so we'll erase that, I believe. Yeah, I don't know if it was Katie. Katie was the only one I saw moving, but she wasn't going into the lane. I don't know what, exactly what he called. Spring Hill's ball, Lawrence County 29, Spring Hill 5. This time they get across the 10-second line to Rachel Gillum. Parham's going to jump outside at the free throw line. No good. Put back up by LaToya Miller. Good. LaToya Miller uh, is an impressive young player. She, she's going to be a player. You're going to hear about her in the future for Spring Hill. Miller got the basket. Goodwin gives to Hartsfield. Hartsfield into Brandy Bean. A turnaround jumper. Good. Brandy does a great job posting up. She backed the girl almost completely under the basket. Once the ball got to her, all she had to do was turn around and lay it in. Goodwin, Goodwin to Hartsfield, and it goes out of bounds. Give it to Spring Hill. Yeah, you like seeing Kayla shoot that. Of course, she was trying to get the ball up to her teammate, to Wendy, and you, you know you, it, it's hard to go, to go against that. But you'd rather shoot that ball. Spring Hill wide open under the basket, a shot up there, no good. In and out by Sykes. Rebound goes to Katie Smith. Katie to Brandy Bean. Brandy put it up, no good. Ball knocked around, touch last by Parham out of Spring Hill. It's a beautiful cross-court feed there by Katie to Brandy. And, and think about Brandy, uh, Katie, she gets the ball to him at the right time. She gets it to him early enough where they can catch the ball, find the basket, and go to the basket. Here's Wallace taking the inbounds play, gives to Hartsfield for three, no good. Rebound stripped out of there by Spring Hill. Stephanie Johnson. Johnson's long pass to Nene Caldwell. Nene is going to be fouled by Brandy Bean. Yeah, I th I th Brandy bumped her, and then, and then Miranda came in behind her. I'm not sure. Wallace. Yeah, he ended up calling it on Miranda. Miranda came in behind her, and there was contact from both of them, but I guess Miranda made the contact first. That'll be her first, the third team foul. Both teams have committed three, and here is Caldwell at the free throw line. Her shot is no good. They're struggling a little bit. Uh, Miller's the only one that seems like she's con consistently going to be able to do something on the offensive end for Spring Hill. No good. The second one and uh, Katie Smith rebounds across the timeline. <laughs> Katie had the ball slapped loose. A whistle and a foul on LaToya Miller. That was a little bit of a picky foul. She knocked the ball loose from Katie, and when she came up to her, she kind of put her hands on her and may have, may have nudged her a little bit. But that, that was a little picky. Lawrence County with a basketball. Katie Smith puts it in play to Kayla Goodwin. Goodwin's got it at the top of the circle. 31 to seven, Lawrence County with the lead. Here's a pass to uh, Randy Bean. She got inside, missed it, got the rebound, put it up. Somebody blocked the shot, a whistle and a foul. Was it Caldwell or was it Rachel Gillum? Let's see. Might be on Miller. Well, yeah, it was on Miller. I thought I thought it was on Caldwell also. But Brandy's getting some good that was That was beautiful ball movement around there, coming around the key to Kayla, and she just touched past her right into Brandy. Had, had the shot there, but they, they hacked her when she went up. 
What a Tuesday night crowd. Well, they're calling that a non-shooting foul. They're going to give it to us on the baseline. Uh, now the official is talking. I, I think that was surely a shooting foul. Okay, it's uh, 31 to 7. Lawrence County's leading. The Lady Cats have led all the way. They led 16 to 5 after the first quarter. I, th I think the crowd's doing what we did. I think the foul was on Caldwell, and, and they gave it on Miller, and that's her third, and the crowd yeah. and the coach are upset about, about who the call was on. Well, it wasn't on Miller, was it? I, I don't think so. I, like I said, I believe it was on Caldwell. And, of course, if that's on Miller with three fouls, that, they may have to bring her out. That hurts. 4.16 to go. You know, uh, things like that seem to occur more often with three refs than, than we had two. Yeah, it does. I don't know if they, if they count on the other guy a little bit too much or, or exactly what. Of course, I guess in a shuffle like that, uh, I guess it's easy to lose track of uh, who they are, but I, would, I don't think that foul was on Miller. Pass comes in to Wendy Hartsfield. A turnaround jumper by Hartsfield. No good. Rebound is knocked out of bounds. Touch last by Lawrence County. <laughs> yeah, Kayla skied up there and tried to get the rebound and knock that one out. Gillum puts it in play to Nene Caldwell, and she's going to be forced to the baseline and stepped out of bounds. Yeah, that, that could have, you know, well, of course, I'm, I'm a long way from it. I don't know that a foul occurred, but it looked like she was, she was sure crowded, and I don't know if how much contact there was. Kayla Goodwin puts the ball in play to Katie Smith. Katie with it. Back to uh, Kayla Goodwin. Goodwin gives to Miranda Wallace. Randy Ann Hall wants to come back in for Spring Hill. Here's a pass intercepted by Spring Hill. Running down quickly for the Lady Raiders. Stephanie Johnson, a shot up, no good. Rebound, Wallace. Miranda Wallace takes it. Miranda gives to Katie Smith. Katie's going to drive to the middle, give to Wallace. She got a layup, good. That's a beautiful look by Katie. Everything had stopped on the side of the floor. She just looked cross court and found Miranda, headed to the basket for an easy layup. 33 to 7, Lawrence County with the lead. Spring Hill having trouble getting a shot off, and they turn it over, traveling as Stephanie Johnson wanted to stop and shoot, but the defense was so strong, she couldn't do it. Yeah, and they're, and they're getting a little frustrated now. Score 33 to 7, and they're putting a lot of effort out and, and, and just can't seem to, to get much rewards for it. So they're getting a little bit frustrated. 33 to 7, Lawrence County with the lead right here as Spring Hill comes down. Kayla on defense and Kayla Goodwin with a basketball. The Lady Raiders bearing down. Katie Smith gets it at the top of the circle. Tullahoma in here Thursday night for a big district basketball game. Goodwin feeds underneath to Brandy Bean. She got open, missed it, put it back up. Good. Glad she made that. She's had a couple of tough shots and she normally makes, just hadn't gone in for them. Glad she would get that one in. Yeah, she got the rebound. Here's a steal by Katie Smith, driving Katie Bank did no good. Tipped once by Lawrence County, no good. Rebound Kayla Goodwin. Goodwin gives out to Katie Smith, trying to feed Brandy Bean underneath. The ball goes out of bounds. Spring Hill will have it. Yeah, okay, Kayla just got away from Kayla. That, that, that was way out of there, but that's just, that's just one of those things that happens. She's one guy, she's rebounding, hustling, and playing defense all over the place. So. Here's Kim Luke, 5'11", junior, coming into the game for the Lady Cats. Kim Luke will come in. Lawrence County will go on defense. Here's a pass intercepted by Katie Smith, stopping, jumping at the free throw line. Good. Yeah, that, that we're, we're, just, we're just so much quicker than they are, and defensively, they're, they're telegraphing passes, and we're going after them as hard, so we're, we're getting a lot of turnovers. There's another one by Miranda Wallace, and foul by Spring Hill on the layup. And a whistle and a foul on Spring Hill's Rachel Gillum. 37-7 is the score, Lawrence County leading. 
Orange County wants time, a 30-second time, 37 to 7, two minutes to go in the first half, back in 30 seconds. Our pre-Christmas sale is underway at Rice Department Store on Cruise Street, where you'll find huge savings on all Levi jeans, like the Levi 505 Orange Tab Straight Leg and Bootleg Jeans in pre-wash, just $26.95. Levi 550 and 505 Red Tab Jeans, $34.95. Levi 550 Pre-wash Relax Fit Orange Tab Jeans, $27.95. The Levi 517 Boot Cut and 505 Straight Hard Denim Jeans, $22.95. Not a pair. Levi Denim Work Shirts, $34.95, and Levi Jackets, $54.95. At the free Christmas sale, now underway at Rice Department Store, Cruise Street, here in Lawrenceburg. Okay, back at the gym right here is Lawrence County. He's got Kim Loop into the basketball game for the first time. Kim Loop, Mel Saxon, Randy Bean, Katie Smith, Miranda Wallace. And a game like this, like I say, gives you a chance to play some players that don't play a lot and get them on the floor with the with with the with the starting, you know, four of the starters, and that, that gets them a little better idea of the speed and quickness and what you want to do, you know, when you're when you're on the floor. So this is a good good time to get some experience. Wallace at the free throw line. First time she's been at the free throw line, her shot is no good, but Miranda's got six points. So Miranda, Miranda's a good free throw shooter. Uh, she didn't she didn't release that one very well. She's a better free throw shooter than that. Free throw good by Miranda Wallace. 38 to 7. Lawrence County with their biggest lead in a full court press. Spring Hill trying to get the ball down and they throw it away. Intercepted by Kim Loop. Loop gives to Katie Smith. Katie rushing it down, gives to Saxon in the corner. Saxon started to shoot the three. Now she's going to kick it back out to Katie Smith. Katie giving to Miranda Wallace. Wallace going to drive, stop, jump, no good. Brandy Bean fights for the rebound. Can't hold it. Spring Hill will play. Good hustle, good hustle right there. Going after loose balls everywhere, even with the score like it is. These kids, you know, they play hard every time they're on the floor. Here's a pass intercepted by Brandy Bean. Gives to Wallace. A shot up there, no good, but a violation underneath. Could have been a lane or traveling, but Spring Hill will have it with 138 to go. I don't even know that we had that ball three seconds. It much less had time to be in the, in the, in the lane three seconds, but we'll go, we'll go along with it. Here's uh, Kim Loop with a steal. Loop's going to stop at the free throw line. Banked it good. <laughs> oh, stepped in just inside just inside the free throw line and banked one in. That's her, that's her first basket tonight. Mel Saxon gives to Katie Smith. Katie's layup good, and she's fouled. Great assist by Mel Saxon. All right. This gives you, like I said, a lot of chance to work on a lot of things. We're running some a little bit different offensive cuts than we've run at times, We're going through everything, making sure everybody is on the same page, and then that'll help us out. That'll help us out later on, especially Thursday night. That, that's that's the big one. Katie Smith at the free throw line. Katie free throw a little short, no good. Kim Luke got the rebound, put a shot up that's blocked. But Lawrence County got it back. Brandy Bean gives to Miranda Wallace. Miranda's going to drive. She's got a little jump shot. Good. Oh, she's got a nice shot. She's quick. Gets, gets the ball up high. Gets it over her head. Got a nice release. There's another turnover, Mel Saxon. This time, Saxon's going to shoot. No good. Put back by Katie Smith. Good. Mel tried a little left-handed reverse, and she didn't, she didn't quite get it up there that time, but Katie got it. Put it back. Here's Spring Hill. Parham going to rush down across midcourt. Parham dishes it off to Stephanie Johnson with 43 seconds to go. Nene Caldwell going to jump. Her shot short, no good. Randy Ann Hall fights for the rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Miranda Wallace. Yeah, Hall's got quite a height advantage on Miranda. I, wouldn't play, I don't know that I'd go along with her in a jumping contest. Miranda huh. just get up and knock that one away. Here's uh, Chris Rowling into the basketball game. Lawrence County on defense. The Lady Cats lead 46 to 7. And Spring Hill working. They're going to throw it away. A terrible pass by Amanda Parham right at the feet of her teammate. Lawrence County will have the basketball. 
Well, if we're playing tough pressure defense, that's the only way we know how to play. We, we're, we're a man-to-man team, and, and we're, we put pressure on people on defense, and that's just resulting in a lot of turnovers. Here goes Saxon driving her shot, bouncing, no good. Randy Bean got the rebound, put it up, no good. A scramble for the ball, and it's a jump ball. The possession arrow will favor Lawrence County. Yeah, Nene Caldwell came out of there with that ball pretty, pretty rough. I think she's getting a little bit upset with the score, not getting, not getting the ball on the offensive end. Perhaps. Excuse me, the ball, the possession arrow favors Spring Hill with eight seconds, and Rachel Gillum going to be double teamed in the corner. Spring Hill threw it away over and back. With two seconds, the Lady Cats will have it. See if Coach Joyner's got a two-second play here. Well, if he does, he probably he probably won't show anybody it in this kind of a ball game. But, yeah, I'm sure he's got it. <laughs> Katie Smith will put the ball in play. Katie gives to Saxon, and she's fouled. I know that drives Kim Hayes, the Spring Hill coach, absolutely up the wall. Yeah, you don't want to foul your ride. I know what you're going to say. With one and a half seconds left, the last thing you want to do is foul a girl that's got her back to the basket, you know, 25 feet away, and and they did. So I put the mail on the line. Okay, Mel Saxon goes to the free throw line. Jim, the score was uh, 45 to 19 up there. Lawrence County's going to outscore themselves. Saxon's free throw good. Yeah, I didn't, th- I didn't think they would. I made the comment the last time out. I didn't think we'd have 45 points this time in the afternoon. We've got 47. Looks like we could end up with 48, and, and they've only got seven versus 19. So, Saxon's second free throw good. She's got a dozen points in the game, and the quarter's going to end. The first half score, Lawrence County 48, Spring Hill 7. Back here, the, the interview with Coach uh, by Frisbee's. Payne Clark has joined us now. Coach Clark, last Friday night, I thought one of the best road victories for a Wildcat team in many years. Congratulations. Well, I appreciate it. That, that was a big one. That was a huge one for us and put us 2-1 and one in the district. And uh, if we can get this Thursday night, uh, we'll be in good shape at 3-1 and one in the district. But uh, I, I was so pleased with Friday night. I thought well, defensively, I thought we, we came ready to play and uh, made some adjustments. I thought the kids did real well at responding. Uh, we had a lead there and you know, it wound up a minute and a half or, or about four minutes left in the game. They took a lead and then uh, we kind of went back and forth. But I thought the last few minutes of the game, I thought I thought we stepped it up and, and we didn't crack under pressure. And you know, I think one of the keys for us is how we do in close games. And, I, you know, games that have gone down to the wire, I think we're, we're basically three and one in those games. And, and so hopefully that's helping us for the future and uh, getting us used to being in those situations and the more successful we Just didn't look like we were going to be able to handle him, but that's all he scored the whole game. What y'all do to change things up? Well, we started fronting him a little bit, uh, completely fronting him, and then making sure that somebody got him on the backside uh, on the rebounds. He was killing us on the boards, and he did a good job of sealing. And like I said, the thing that scares me about him is he's a sophomore as well as one of their other starters, uh, number 25, Isaiah Jones. Yeah. Uh, he stepped up and hit a big bucket for him there late in the game and, and, and made some key plays and was tough for us to match up because he's a 6'4 guard. And we were basically playing him. I tell you, we had some kids that... Uh, when we went man, Tanner Bryant was guarding him. Tanner's about 5'9", and uh, Isaiah Jones is 6'4", and I, I thought he did an excellent job on him when he was guarding him. Yeah, I think you're right, Coach. Uh, the ball game, uh, as you said, we built a lead. I guess we got seven or eight points there in the second half, and then down the stretch they got hot and uh, retook the lead momentarily. Your guys got it back and then got ahead by two points, and you called a timeout. They ran a real nice play that got Brian Mitchell uh, the ball in close. Uh, where he could, about a six-footer, I think, and he right. banked it in at four-point lead with about a minute to go, and he was right. able to hold on to it. Well, actually, uh, that, that, that may not be exactly how we drew it up. That may have been one of those, but basically what we uh, looked at was uh, – we were hoping they'd go man with 43 seconds left, which they did. And when they went man, uh, we wanted Bryant with the ball with uh, Taylor on him because Taylor is a big uh, post and, and Bryant's a lot quicker than Taylor Taylor is. And so we wanted that matchup with the ball. And uh, uh, I told Bryant, said, if you get it inside the block, score. Otherwise, we're not taking a shot. Uh, and 
that we just happened to get that. And, uh, and then, then uh, down on the other end, Clint Brazier made a big defensive play and kicked it out to Outlaw, and then they, uh, uh, a flagrant foul on that, and the game was over then. But uh, I thought, uh, thought the kids showed a lot of composure down the stretch. And I think when you hold a team to 50 points, so Franklin County's going to, uh, you know, they're a good team, and they're just going to keep getting better because they're young. Uh, but I think when you hold them to 50 points, that says something defensively for us. I, I think that was a hopefully a uh, sign of what's coming this year defensively. I think that was a big improvement. You used uh, Brian Smith some as a sort of a defensive specialist down late, and that paid off for you. Right. Helped us in the Shovel game and helped us the other night a little bit. Uh, uh, Brian, Brian, the good thing about Brian that I like is that he knows his role. You know, and Brian knows he's going in there to stick somebody on defense, and he knows offensively he's in there to set picks and, and to do, you know, to, to shoot inside 10 feet and move a lot and he's quick enough and and plus i tell you just playing quarterback uh, as much as he did with football and uh, that leadership role i think that's one thing that helps with him at the end of the game i don't mind having him in there when the when the pressure's on the line because he's been there uh, and i think some of our other kids are stepping up uh, chris outlaw you know is a sophomore we got a lot of juniors and seniors with experience but uh Chris Outlaw is a sophomore that's, that's really getting in there now under pressure, and, and he's doing a good job responding to pressure, and I think every week we see improvement in him. All right, he doesn't make many turnovers, doesn't seem like at all, Coach. And I know you were glad to get Blake Gobble back. Well, what a great scoring punch he's added for you. Right, right, and he stepped it up on the, on the boards and scoring. He made a real big shot. I don't know how he got it to go in, but uh, he made some real big plays for us. And, uh, again, just a leadership role, and uh, he – uh, he took a, we ran a double screen for him in the first half and he missed a shot and he came over there. Next time he came out of the game, I didn't take him out for that, but the next time he came out of the game, he came over there and said, Coach, I'll hit it in the second half. I mean, and that's, we need that confidence. And, uh, uh, and he did. He came through in the second half and really provided us a spark, especially there in the fourth quarter. Now, Bryant Mitchell, of course, was back, and I think he wound up with, what, about 20 points? 20, right. He wound up with 20 points. Uh, his knee seems to be okay. Is it yeah. is responding well to treatment and all that? Yeah, he's not favoring it at all, and uh, he, he's going full speed. And uh, trainer John was really impressed with uh, with, with the way he looked on it. Uh, he looked just like he did before he hurt it. And, uh, you know, trainer John said there's nothing wrong with it, something that may happen again to him. But, uh, you know, he, he said it wouldn't. It's not because of the injury that it's well. It's as good as it may. He just sprained it. He didn't tear anything. And so uh, he's ready to go full speed. And the good thing about Brian, he didn't come out there favoring. He went out there full speed. And uh, he's going to have a tough task tonight. I'm going to put him on it. We're going to put him on the point guard starting out. And at the top of the zone. And uh, we're going to see what he can do out there. Because I, I, want, I want them to know when they come across half court, they're going to have to pass it off. They're not going to be able to penetrate on us like they did up there. Yeah, we'll talk about that game. Coach, you played it, of course, without, uh, I guess, three stars. Starters, really, and uh, it's close for a while, but then they strapped us pretty good. It was after yeah. that very emotional, shovelable right. victory. I, you know, you could attribute a lot of things to it, but they beat us pretty good. Right. Well, I didn't have us prepared to play, I don't think, and I I, I knew it was going to be tough for us to uh, to play after the shovel game, plus uh, missing a couple of starters and another one injured and another one sick, but. Uh, Still, I think we should have done a little better than we did, and uh, we're, we're going to try to make it up tonight and uh, give the home fans uh, something to look forward to. Uh, Coach Young does an excellent job with them. They play hard. Those guys get after it, and I think they get the most out of uh, what they got out on the floor. They're, they're pretty small as far as their lineup, but they're real aggressive and real quick, and they run a good motion offense, and uh, defensively they get after you, and uh, I think they're going to be – They'll be doing something against Bryant in front of him, or uh, they'll be playing a tight zone against him, or, or either have, maybe like Franklin County have a man fronting him all over the floor, basically. And so they'll do something to adjust to that, and, and, and we got to have some other players step up uh, like they did the other night. And uh, you know, Bryant's, Bryant's doing a good job of adjusting. Uh, we did, I thought, did a good job. I thought he did a good job the other night, and the other players, he wound up with nine out of his 20 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, they didn't change defenses. We just uh, you know, looked at getting in the gaps a little bit better. And, uh, and uh, like I said, uh, uh, that's what it's all about, is getting used to playing in close games and responding to pressure. And uh, I think we're doing that if we'll just keep keep making improvements and not be satisfied. All right, Coach. Best of luck to you tonight. Thank Go you. get them. Thank you. Coach Shane Clark, our halftime guest. Boxy. Uh, Griffin. See some new teams, different looks. It, it's just fun. You want to go. You want to go play hard, but it, you know you want to have fun and compete. That one, Coach Clark's in. Here's Katie Smith getting the ball inbounds as the second half gets underway. 
Taylor Goodwin with it. Talk about Maplewood, Pearl Cone, White's Creek, Austin East, Bolton, Martin Luther King, and Lawrence County Wildcats. Boy, some big names in that Christmas tournament to be played at Pearl Cone. Here's a shot up there by Goodwin that's no good. The ball is going to ricochet out, and Lawrence County turns it over. Spring Hill will have it. A good first half by the Lady Cats, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, excellent. Especially on defense. Uh, most of their baskets were created by turnovers. Good pressure defense, good full court defense, and you know, can't, can't get much better effort than we had the first half. Okay, Nene Caldwell posting up, going to kick it back out to Parham. Her shot banked it good. Was that Gillum or Parham? I believe uh, that was Parham. Okay. Yes. Parham nails a, is that a three? Uh, no, they said she was on the line, yeah. so they gave her a two. Two-pointer. Here's Saxon, wide open under the basket. She missed it. Nate Nate Caldwell rebounds. Too wide open that time. <laughs> too wide open. 48 to 9. Here goes Gillum driving. Her shot blocked out of bounds right there by Melody Saxon. Coming back in will be LaToya Sykes. Trish Rowling will come in for Lawrence County. Rowling will replace Melody Saxon. 6.59 left in the third quarter. Here's a pass coming in to LaToya Miller. She drops it, turned it over. All right, right. Just a lot, a lot of unforced turnovers. A lot of them have been forced and A lot of unforced turnovers by Spring Hill. And obviously, as the game's going on, they've got a little more frustrated. Katie Smith calling out a play for the Lady Cats. Katie gives to Kayla Goodwin. Goodwin with a basketball back to Trish Rowling. Rowling, a senior in the lineup. Here's a three-point shot. Good by Hartsfield. Beautiful shot. We have people posting up inside, getting open. Uh, we, we've got people open all over the floor. We just take the first good-looking shot we've got. Wendy made that one. That's the second three-pointer by Wendy Hartsfield tonight. And Wendy's really having a big game with 10 points. Here's uh, Spring Hill going to gun a three of their own. Bouncing around, no good. Amanda Parra missed it. Katie Smith with the rebound. Katie's going to give off to Trish Rowling. Rowling's shot, good. Beautiful feed by Katie. She does like, such a good job seeing the players coming down the floor in the, what we call a secondary break. And she found Trish all the way across court for the nice basket. 53 to 9, Lawrence County with a lead. Latoya Miller with a basketball. Miller gives to Amanda Parham. Parham put it up, no good. Brandy Bean rebounds to Katie Smith. Katie looks for somebody, going to jump one up. Good. Katie hit it. Uh, everybody's in the flow of the offense now. Whoever's got the ball and gets the first good shot is going up and, and with every, every bit of confidence in the world, knocking them all down. 55 to 9 is the score. Lawrence County with the lead. Amanda Parham goes in the corner right here to Latoya Sykes. Sykes looking for Latoya Miller. Miller can't hold it. The pass was fine. Miller just couldn't hold it. Miranda Wallace will enter the game for Kayla Goodwin. I'm sure we'll have a lot of players in and out this second half, trying to keep some of them on the floor all the time, just to give everybody a chance to play with, you know, with each different look on the floor, each different set of, uh, of girls. Well, they all played at Spring Hill. Here goes Brandy Bean driving down, banked it too hard. No good. Brandy got the rebound, put it up. No good. A whistle and a foul. Uh, the touch just not quite there on those two shots. She's, she's making good, strong efforts to the basket, and the ball's just a little bit hard coming back off the front rim. And uh, she, she's, a, she's a good shooter, though. That, that, that's, a, you know, rare for her. Brandy Bean at the free throw line, a fine senior. Her free throw is good. Boy, Brandy is such a great free throw shooter. 56 to 9 is the score. Brandy Bean for her second one. This one is good. Brandy Bean nails a pair of free throws. She's got six points. A lot of rebounds for Brandy Bean tonight. Latoya Miller being guarded by Miranda Wallace. They're about the same size. I don't think Miller jumps quite as well as Wallace. Do you? I don't. I don't know that anybody jumps, you know, <laughs> pound for pound, inch for inch, whatever, any better than Miranda does. And Miller's made her third turnover of the half in first half, and, and up in Spring Hill, she was their most consistent player, but she's struggling tonight. Okay. Trish Rowling will put the ball in play right here to Katie Smith. Katie got a screen from Brandy Bean. Gives back to Brandy now. Brandy looks inside. Gives to uh, 
Brandy, her shot blocked, taken by Rachel Gillum. Gillum to Parham. Parham to Miller, knocked out of bounds. Touch last by Miller. Give it to Lawrence County. Yeah, uh, Mr. Noah cut over, overruled, uh, overruled Dixon there and gave it back to him. But uh, I, I hope they're not going to swallow their whistles a little bit this half. It looked like a foul on the other end against, you know, uh, one of their players fouling Brandy and no call made. I hope they're not going to just let the game go because of the score. Nah, they won't do that. Here's Bren Thompson, 5'8", freshman, entering the game. Lawrence County giving off. Here's a shot up there by... Miller, no good. Bryn Thompson rebounds to Katie Smith. Long pass to Wallace. She's got a layup and missed it. Rebound. Brandy Bean had it for a minute. Taken back by Miller. Miller's got the numbers. Her shot, no good, but a whistle and a foul. Is that on Bean? Let's see. I believe so, yes. Foul is on Bean. This would be a good opportunity, I guess, to me to apologize to my wife and two kids sitting at home with me with the car keys in my pocket. I got to wow. call them at half and wonder where they were, and I uh, suddenly, suddenly found out. So we'll, we'll try to keep them posted on what happened with Brian here in the Surprise. <laughs> yeah, I'll imagine you'll be surprised when I get home. <laughs> Here's LaToya Miller at the free throw line. Miller with good form there. Her shot bouncing around, back out, no good. Second one by Miller is good. And they finally got in double figures, which, I, you know, it's a young team. You hate, you hate to see them really get that far behind, but uh, we're, we're, play, we're just playing that well. Here's Katie Smith going to put it up. No good. Brandy Bean got the rebound. Her shot, good. Katie Smith got fouled pretty hard, didn't she? I thought so, and, I, you know, I hope they're not going to let too much go. And this is a veteran bunch. So, I mean, they won't, they won't do it to point anybody getting hurt. I just hate to see them not let everybody play the same way. Here's a pass going in the corner. Miller's going to gun a three that's short. No good. Rebound out of there to Randy Ann Hall. Her shot no good. Rebound taken by Trish Rowling. Good, Rowling. strong. Good, strong rebound with Trish. You bet. And the pass goes to Katie Smith. 3.30 left in the third quarter. Lawrence County with a big lead. Trish Rowling's going to drive the baseline. Stop, jump, short, no good. Trish got the rebound, put it back up. Good. Good, good job. Followed her own shot, went up, got a strong rebound, and went back up strong with it and put it in. I, that's a good job, Trish. Boy, that's a thing. fine shot. Trish Rowling. Randy Ann Hall with the ball. Spring Hill been shuffling players in and out. Here's a steal by Brandy Bean. Brandy's got a layup. She'll stop, put it up, good. Oh, that's hard work. I'm glad to see her finally get two points. And, you know, that, that was hard work on the defensive end, getting the ball down the floor. 63-10 to 10 is the score. Lawrence County with a big lead. This will be the seventh win for the Lady Cats, I think, won't it? Right, right. Two, three, this is the other. Four, five, six, seven. It'll be the seventh win, and the big game coming up Thursday night. Tallahoma in here. Lawrence County leads the district, and, boy, a win over Tallahoma would really be big. Here's a foul on Miranda Wallace. <laughs> Miranda trying for the steal. <laughs> she she ran right it. into her, didn't she? Yeah, she's made so many steals tonight. I think she thinks she can take it away from her whenever she's ready. But she got, she got a little contact that time. That'll be an exciting boys game Thursday night, too. I hope, hope we have a big crowd here tonight. Those of, those of you who couldn't make it out tonight, I hope everybody's here Thursday night because we need a lot of support for these two basketball games Thursday. So a little touch foul on Katie Smith on the inbounds play. Okay, Katie picks up her foul, her second. Kelly Loop is in the game along with Bren Thompson, Kayla Goodwin, Wendy Hartsfield, and Katie Smith. All these players will be back next year with the exception of Kayla Goodwin. Here's uh, Goodwin bringing the ball down, giving to Katie Smith. Katie being bothered right there by LaToya Miller. Back to Goodwin. Goodwin going to spin and give in the corner to Hartsfield. 2.05 left, pass inside to Kim Loop. Back to Katie for three, that is no good. Katie got the rebound in the corner, saved it, but Intercepted by Spring Hill. Yeah, good hustle for Katie then. She just couldn't find anybody in that split second. She had to look on the floor. She couldn't find a white jersey to get the ball to. Spring Hill with it. 63 to 10 is the score. Lawrence County's led all the way. Long shot up there by Sykes. No good. 
the ball's going to ricochet out of bounds. A uh, good rebound position that time by Brand. The ball went off uh, Randy Ann Hall, I believe, off, off the, it came hard off the rim. Kayla Goodwin will bring the ball down for Lawrence County. Goodwin looks inside for Kim Loop. Loop's going to spin, put it up, bank it, no good. Knocked out of bounds. Touch last by uh, Spring Hill, I believe. I believe it's going to be our ball under our basket. Ashley Johnston comes into the game. Katie Smith will sit down. Katie's really been scoring lately. We, you know, like I said, we don't have to have any particular people score any particular any, any certain night, but you like to see her get, cons get 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 the consistent scoring. Here's a three in the corner by Hartsfield. That's her third three of the night. Wendy Hartsfield's got 13 points. 66 to 10 is the score. Nene Caldwell with a basketball. Nene gives it off to Stephanie Johnson. Ball is knocked loose, almost stolen by Ashley Johnson. Johnston. Spring Hill got it back with under a minute to go. Pass under there to Nene Caldwell, and she'll be fouled by Brim Thompson. A little bit out of position that time. Had to, had to reach in, try to get the ball at the top. I think grabbed the wrist a little bit there. Of course, like, like I've said before, this gives us a good chance to get a lot of girls in and keep some of the regulars on the floor at the same time so everybody can get used to, to you know, to playing with everybody else. Spring Hill putting the ball in play. Pass comes in there. Severson with it for Spring Hill. Severson gives to Miller. Miller to Johnson. Stephanie Johnson, jumper on the side, no good. Rebound, Kayla Goodwin. Goodwin gives to Ashley Johnston. A.J. weaves through traffic and crosses the timeline. Here's a Wendy Hartsfield, a three from the corner. This time she's on the other side. Uh, I think that was, that's four threes on the night. Uh, you know, that, that's, that super looks at the basket and she's really releasing it well. 69 to 10 is the score. Pass under there to uh, LaTonya Johnson. Her shot no good. They scramble for the rebound. Good also that time by Brynn. Couldn't, couldn't get the ball coming off the board. Managed to get it going out of bounds or, or at, at the baseline. Got knocked out of bounds for the foul. Nikki Johnson picks up that foul. Nikki Johnson gets the foul. She's a 5'6 sophomore. We're still in the third quarter with two seconds to go. As Kayla Goodwin guns a long shot, no good. The third quarter score is 69 to 10. Back in one minute. Hi, this is John Robinson, Athletic. Two of the big games played last Friday night that included Coffee County and Columbia, boys and girls. Where Columbia, the Lady Lions, defeated Coffee County 41 to 31. 69 to 10, starting the fourth quarter. Lawrence County with a big lead. Nene Caldwell wants to shoot. Kim Luke's guarding her. Pass comes back, a shot up by Spring Hill, bouncing around. Good, it's going to fall in. Good. Stephanie Johnson got it. Ashley Johnston across midcourt gives to Kayla Goodwin. Katie Schultz getting up and ready to come in. Here's a loop. Double team back to Goodwin. Goodwin shot in and out. Tough. No good. Rebound out of there to Faith Severson. Severson's picked up at midcourt by Ashley Johnston. Severson with a basketball. Pass under there to Caldwell. Nene had it for a minute, then it goes to the baseline, kicked around, and saved by Lawrence County. A whistle and a foul in the corner. Thought, thought that ball was going out of bounds, and Ashley Johnston saved it. Yeah, I'd hate to have to go back and describe what happened right there. Everybody hit by on the team. Both teams were in the floor and piled in that one corner over there, and I think finally a foul. Uh, and saw a ball coming back up the floor. But Lawrence County with a basketball. And now Lawrence County's got Kayla Goodwin, Ashley Johnston, Bryn Thompson, Kim Loop, and Katie Schultz in the ball game at the top of the circle. Bryn Thompson gives to Schultz. Schultz looks inside for a loop, and she turned it over. I was trying to reach to the side to, to get the bounce pass in there and drug her pivot foot just a little bit. She's trying to get the ball inside. Good effort. She just got to keep that foot planted. 
645 left in the game and Mandy Edwards gets up and gets ready to come in. 69 to 12, Lawrence County with the lead. The Lady Cats have led all the way in this game. Here's a Parham, gonna have it knock loose, strip stolen by Bryn Thompson. She gives to Ashley Johnston. Long pass by Johnston to Loop. Kim's double teamed in the corner. Back to AJ, AJ back to Loop. She'll turn around, jump, too hard, no good. Shields got the rebound, her shot no good. And this time, Nene Caldwell out of there with it for Spring Hill. 69 to 12, Barnes County with the lead. Trish Rowling will come back in when she can. Probably come in for Taylor Goodwin. A whistle and a foul on Ashley Johnston. Yeah, AJ just got a little bit close. You want her to play tough. You, know, you want to play tough to the final whistle. You want to play good footwork, good position. You just don't want to, don't want to reach in, don't want to pick up those kind of fouls. Spring Hill with a basketball right here. Severson is going to give it off to Stephanie Johnson. Her shot no good. The rebound saved by Faith Severson. Spring Hill with a basketball. A give and go right there. Severson gives it off to Tiffany Bowens in the ball game. Nene Caldwell put it up. Good and a foul. Good effort that time by Caldwell. Made a, made a good rebound, put the ball back in hold, got fouled too. That, that's a nice effort on her part. Ashley Johnston picks up the foul, and Caldwell goes to the free throw line trying to complete the three-point play. Nene Caldwell, her shot, good. Caldwell hit it. 69-15. Of course, we're just playing good pressure defense. We're not pressing full court, we're just, but, but you can't, you know, you, you've got to have the effort the whole ball game. You can't just back off and not play defense at all. Ashley Johnston put it up no good. Bren Thompson rebounds. She's fouled as she tries to go back up with a shot. Good effort that time on Bren. Uh, good, good offensive rebound trying to get the ball back up. Like I said, this is a learning experience, especially for her and A.J. being freshmen. It's just great that they're out here able to play with this caliber of teammates for a whole season, learn from them in practice every day and in games, too. Free throw by Bryn, bouncing around, no good. She'll have one more, Bryn Thompson, at the free throw line. Normally a pretty good free throw shooter. You, you, most of these girls are. This one a little short, no good. Rebound taken by Ashley Johnson. She's in trouble, found Trish Rowling. Rowling gives back to Ashley Johnston. Setting up the offense now. Johnston got a screen from Rowling. Trish at the top of the circle. Gives to Katie Shields. 69-15, five minutes to go. Lawrence County leading. Mandy Edwards threw it away, a turnover. Just misread, Trish was going one way, Mandy thought she was going the other and just didn't get the ball to her. Here's Spring Hill going to drive too far under the basket and almost dribble out of bounds, but Stephanie Johnson still has it. She's going to turn, go back in, her shot no good, a whistle and a foul. I believe we're going to have a timeout here. I don't know yet if it'll be a full timeout or a 20. Foul on uh, Mandy Edwards there as Lawrence County leads right here, 69-15. The Lady Cats have a web page, huh? Well, we're bringing out, put one together, and, and for those of you that are real good at that stuff, we're not good about how to do that stuff. But if anybody has got a computer at home, will email me. Uh, if the web page is really too hard or long an address to give you, but... If you'll just uh, send me an email to T-E-A-M-C, that's Team C, at USIT.net. Uh, I'll be glad to send you back our website, let you look at it. Uh, and again, we're, we're updating it all the time. It may be mid-January before we really get it looking good. That's great. That's great. Well, I enjoy doing it. It gives me a chance to learn how those things work a little bit. Oh, by the way, I, as a scorekeeper at, at, uh, at halftime, she said they thought lockers would be back after Christmas, which would be a big help for them. She's got a shoulder separation, and that, you never know really when that's going to heal up. So it'll, be, it'll probably be best they know it'll be after Christmas, but they don't really know when. Stephanie Johnson missed the first one. Spring Hill has outscored us 5 nothing so far in the fourth quarter. This free throw good by Stephanie Johnson. 
Here comes A.J. across midcourt. Ashley Johnston gives to Bryn Thompson. Top of the circle to Mandy Edwards. Edwards back to Johnston. Ashley with it. The Lawrence County Reserves in there. Edwards to Johnston. Inside, the pass goes to Bryn Thompson. Back to Edwards, running and from the corner. Good. Nice shot. Nice feed back out from Bryn from the low post to Mandy wide open in the corner. She made the shot. Uh, uh, that's good to see him get on the board now. Okay, here's Severson working for Spring Hill. Four minutes to go, 71-16. Stephanie Johnson starts in, and she's fouled by Katie Schultz. I believe Mandy Edwards may call a little bit of an elbow or something there as her head kind of came snapping. That was Mandy's first two points of the year uh, down the other end. So that gets her, that gets her started off. You like, you like to see everybody get in on the action a little bit. Kim Loop comes in for Bryn Thompson. At the free throw line, Stephanie Johnson. Johnson's free throw good. Second one is up there by Johnson, good. Ashley Johnston across midcourt for the Lady Cats. Orange County gonna win their seventh game and then play Tullahoma Thursday night. Ashley Johnston and Kim Shields. Here's Johnston shooting, no good, rebound. Out of there to Severson. Severson, a good pass to Stephanie Johnson and she's fouled by any one of four people. <laughs> there were people all the way around her. I don't know who they're going to call it on. Foul is on Mandy Edwards, her second. Second foul on Mandy Edwards as Bren Thompson will come back in. Coach Stacy Childress wanted to uh, talk with Bren a minute. I believe about, uh, I believe they look like he's talking about defense. Right, right, and, and probably also rebound position. The, the JB's played over at Giles County last night and, and a team that beat them earlier in the year and looked real well and beat, beat Giles County. I don't remember the final score now by 10 or 15 points. So he's, one of these girls played last night and playing again tonight, so they're getting, they're getting all kinds of experience. Yeah, here's Stephanie Johnson. Her shot, good. Played a game last week, one or two, didn't they? Right, right. And we played so many games lately. I can't even, I can't keep up with all of them. It seems like it's games every night. But I, I'm not complaining a bit. I'm glad to see her busy and, 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 like I said, a chance to play as much as possible. Here's a second shot good. Lawrence County with a basketball. Lawrence County's got Bryn Thompson and Kim Loop in the game now at the same time. Pass goes into Loop, posting up. Put it up, no good, and somebody fouled her. Kim Loop goes to the free throw line. Both Loop and Bryn Thompson have been good rebounders. I didn't see any of Kim's games last year, but Bryn was a good rebounder at Kaufman. Loop's free throw, good. And then they've got to be uh, bringing, bringing uh, and, and loot both in order to play. They've got to rebound and play defense. Uh, that's really what they're on the floor. There's always scores on the floor you know, with us, especially when they're out there with some of the starting group. 73 to 20 is the score. Lawrence County leading. A shot by Spring Hill. Going to ricochet and go out of bounds. Yeah, it's our ball. I think we thought we thought it went, went to Spring Hill. But it's going to be our ball in bounds. And here comes A.J. down with the Kim Loop, bringing it across half court, getting so Okay, as Ashley Johnston with it. A.J. with a basketball, looks for a loop. Loop pulls back out to the top of the circle, gives to Katie Shields. They go inside to Bryn Thompson, forced to pass, intercepted by Spring Hill. Here come the Lady Raiders running down with 2.46 to go. Severson with it. Bad pass, but Spring Hill saved it. Stephanie Johnson shot, no good. And it's knocked out of bounds. Give it to the Lady Cats. 2.37 left in the game. Lawrence County 73, Spring Hill 20. Bren Thompson puts it in play to Katie Schultz. Katie back to Bren. Spring Hill pressing now. Full court pressure, Katie Schultz, out a new prospect, going to work it across the timeline. Katie gives to A.J. A.J. threw it away, 
trying to feed Bryn Thompson. Latoya Miller got it. Her shot in and out, no good. Bryn Thompson goes high for the rebound, and the ball's knocked out of her hands, taken by Stephanie Johnson. She threw it away. Katie Shields got it. Two minutes to go. Get a little raggy. We need to get it back under control, run the offense a little bit, run a little clock, get, get settled in a little. Okay, here goes Katie Schultz driving for the basket. Ball's blocked out of her hands, knocked out of bounds. Give it to the Lady Cats under their goal. It seems like it always gets a little hectic this, this time of the game, not because it was on the floor. It just seems like everybody wants to do something, you know, in, in these last few minutes, get something done before the game's over. Here's uh, Mandy Edwards open outside. Good. Edwards has four points. Looks like Mandy's having fun tonight. Notice that last night over Giles County. She's relaxed now. She's having fun on the floor, and, and, you, and her performance is showing that. She's, she's got to keep doing that. Work hard and have fun. 75 to 20 is the score. Orange County with the lead. Shot by Spring Hill, no good. They fight for the rebound. A jump ball as Ashley Johnston steps in to tie her up. A lot of bodies getting knocked everywhere this time of the game. With a little, with a little over a minute to go and 50, a 55-point lead, it, it gets a little bit, a little bit ragged. Ashley Johnston with a basketball, 119 to go. Big lead for the Lady Cats. A.J. gives to Bryn Thompson, to Mandy Edwards, into Loop. Kim Loop, a turnaround jumper, partially blocked. Put back up by Bryn Thompson. Blocked out of bounds. Give it to the Lady Cats. I believe there could have been a foul there. It was a, a hard block, but I, not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Mandy Edwards looks for somebody, and the pass is going to come back to A.J. Back across midcourt. The Lady Cats will set up. One minute left in the game. Lawrence County on their way to their seventh win without a loss. Pass goes to Bryn Thompson at the top of the circle. Bryn gives back to Ashley Johnson. Johnston with a basketball. A.J. looking for Katie Schultz. Katie pulls out to the circle, gives to Kim Loop. Loop back to Edwards. Lawrence County using the clock right here to Bryn Thompson in the corner. Schultz is open. Her shot, no good. Air ball. Rebound out of there to Lawrence County. Edwards put it up, no good, and somebody fouled her. Good job. We had a couple of people open there underneath cutting on, on their cuts, but each time we had a post player out front with the ball, and they're, they're not used to looking inside, apparently, as much as the guards are. And they, they've got to. That's part of the offense. they got to look inside and swing the ball if, they, if it's not there. Mandy Edwards at the free throw line. Mandy's having a big night for the Lady Cats. Her free throw, good. Mandy Edwards. She's got five points. She's really played well. Edwards with her second shot. It's good. Good job, Mandy. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see her get on the board. And, and you know, she, she's played real well tonight. I'm glad for her. 77 to 20 is the score. Barnes County with the lead. Pass goes to Stephanie Johnson. Her shot up good. 11 seconds to go, 77-22. Bryn Thompson gives to A.J. across the timeline. A.J. is going to gun a three up. Good. A three-pointer for Ashley Johnston at the buzzer. The final score is 80 to 22. 80 to 22 is the final score. We'll be back with a final wrap-up in one minute. Hi, this is Shelly, the hardware girl from Parks Lumber Company. I like being the new spokesperson. That means I get to